from Universal Studios Hollywood, the Samuel Goldwyn Company presents American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley. Glad you could join us for a brand new season of the American Gladiators. Now, we have added some new wrinkles this year, which will make our competition even more keen. We have bolstered our Gladiator core by four, and they are tougher than ever. And speaking of tough, I've got a brand new co-host who used to bang people around for a living. He's Hall of Fame fullback from the Miami Dolphins, number 39, Mr. Larry Zonka. <laughs> good to have you, Michael. Man. Good to be here. Larry, once again, we have traveled the countryside to find some brand new contenders, 20 in all, men and women, and they have some fairly impressive athletic credentials, but they're gonna need more than a fancy resume to get the job done. Well, that's true, exactly, Mike. I've seen what goes on here, and I don't care what kind of resume you have or what kind of background you have. When you come in here and start to meet up with the gladiators, nose to nose, so to speak, things begin to change. It gets very tough, and that's what puts the fine edge on the competition here. Yeah, the tryouts were one thing. This is real battle, and let's this meet the contenders. This is for real. Let's meet the contenders for this preliminary round. In our women's preliminary, please welcome Samantha Bryant of Inglewood, California, a high school track coach. And her opponent, Cinda Metzer of Salt Lake City, Utah, an industrial specialist. In the men's competition, here's Wesley Keck of Arlington, Texas, a firefighter. And his opponent, Scott Reif of Chatsworth, California, a helicopter pilot and reporter. Cinda, I know you're a fine athlete, but you also have a 3.88 grade point average in microbiology, so I would imagine that in this case here, you're planning to use brains as well as brawn. Yes, definitely. There's a lot of strategy involved in this sport, and I'm going to try to use it. Scotty, your presence on the show is the result of a dare? Yeah, that's right, and I'm not too sure it was a good one that I took <laughs> looking at the size of these guys, but uh, I'm here because of the dare. The humiliation of not being here would have been too much. Zonk? Sam, as I understand it, you're a coach of a high school track team, and you run the 100-yard dash in 11.7 seconds. Do you think all that organizational ability and that speed is going to help you today? Well, I'm going uh, to go with some technique and some luck, and hopefully with God's help, I'll be out there as a winner. All right. Wesley? I understand you played a little linebacker and some running back in uh, the semi-pro leagues. You've had some uh, experience knocking some people around. You've had a look at the Gladiators. Do you think they're going to be fairly easy to knock around? I don't think they're going to be easy to knock around. I just wish I had your old line to uh, run some interference for me. <laughs> Four old pros wouldn't hurt a thing, would it? Good luck to both of you today. Well, Larry, our Gladiators have that mean and hungry look in their eye. Contenders, best of luck. Let the games begin. If you haven't seen the American Gladiators before, this is how our competition works. Our contenders, two men and two women, will compete in seven very different events against our American Gladiators. Now, the contenders who amass the most points in those seven confrontations automatically advance to the next round and move one step closer towards our championship final. We are ready now for our first event. Here's Larry with an explanation. As we look at Turbo, Laser, and Gemini are starting off this match with Powerball, a 45-second contest of speed and endurance, where our contenders take balls from alternate buckets in an attempt to score in one of the five goals. The outer worth one point, and the center cylinder worth two. And a look there at Wesley Keck, a firefighter from Arlington, Texas. His opponent, Scott Reif, who's a helicopter pilot and reporter for radio station KLOS in Los Angeles. Referee Larry Thompson about to start the match. And it's underway. Wes Keck in the red, Scott Wright in the blue, and quickly he scores. 
although Laser sends him flying. Good. He'll score. West Kent with a goal there. He brings with him a football background, a linebacker at North Texas State University, and a big man, 6'2", 230. Unopposed there as Gemini was too late to stop that goal. A nice move by Scott Reif, but he couldn't capitalize. Larry, a tough match going on, a lot of banging going on. Both Scott and Wesley are paying the price. These gladiators are some of our biggest gladiators, and they are using their weight and their strength to knock the contenders around. And our contenders starting to run out of steam. Legs getting heavy, and that is it. As you can see, both Scott and Wesley are pretty good-sized fellas in their own right. They've handed out some punishment, but I'm afraid I have to hand it to the gladiators for this round. Over to you, Mike. 45 seconds in Powerball. It can last an eternity. It certainly seemed that long for Scott. I catch your breath a second. Tougher than you thought? Very tough. These guys are a lot tougher than who we went against in practice. <laughs> Sorry you took the dare? No, no. I'm having fun. <laughs> okay. Having a good time. Congratulations. Wes, you're the winner of this particular Powerball matchup, and that experience as a running back in uh, semi-pro ball had to help. Uh, I think so, but I need a lot of luck with this game. These guys are big and strong, and uh, they move quick. How about some of the licks you took? Pretty good ones. I tried to avoid them, though. Well, I know you have aspirations. You're still hoping to get a pro tryout someday. If you're watching out there, NFL scouts, this guy might be good enough to be in your backfield. Anybody. So, Wesley takes a 3-1 lead. Wes and wife Michael traveled here from Texas after his firefighting partners urged him on. We talked about it at work and uh, decided that I was going to go to Phoenix and and try it. The guys volunteered to help pay for my trip to Phoenix, but they also wanted to cut of the prize money, so I said, no, I, I'd take care of that. A lot more to come here on the American Gladiators, including Atlasphere, one of our brand new events. But up next, it's the women's turn to play Powerball. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and we are now ready for the nonstop action of women's Powerball. Let's take a look. Mike, stand by for the terrible trio of women's gladiators, Ice, Gold, and Blaze, in our women's preliminary round. And like their male counterparts, our female gladiators bent on stopping the contenders from scoring. And this contender is Samantha Bryan, a high school track coach and former sprint standout at Grambling State. Samantha's opponent is Cinda Menser of Salt Lake City, Utah. Cinda also has a track background, having competed as a college heptathlete at Nebraska and Northern Arizona universities. She also has a rather interesting nickname. They used to call me Swivel Hips in flag football. We had a flag football team at Northern Arizona University. And they called me that because I'd get the ball and I'd be running through this crowd of people and I'd just be like that. And I wouldn't lose my flags and they'd call penalties because they didn't see how I could get through that many people without getting them ripped off. So they nicknamed me that. Samantha in the red, Cinda in the blue. And Samantha with a little shake and bake, and she scores first. Cinda gets the rough treatment from Blaze. And Samantha has two goals in the bucket already. Samantha using two <laughs> things. The misdirection, obviously, as you alluded to, but also the speed. She's got tremendous speeds from the standing start. Doing a little MC Hammer. You can't touch this. Cinda with that well-earned goal against Ice. Finally on the scoreboard. Tell you what, is kind of long and a little bit thin, but she's wired. She can take a good hit, and she scores again on ice. You know, not that many contenders have been able to uh, match firepower with ice, but Cinda doing a good job, as is Samantha. And that is it, 3-3 final. Interesting competition. Two gals blessed with speed and moves, agility, but surprisingly physical. Mike? 45 seconds of furious action, Samantha and Cinda, a 3-3 tie in Powerball. And Sam, if I can call you that, may I? I love this move. Yeah, Ooh. Oh, I'm just, I'm just happy that I made three balls, you know? I didn't know how I was gonna feel to get hit by one of them, but now that they hit me, I'm ready. Congratulations. Cinda, I think uh, the Gladiators may have underestimated you. I think the audience and the fans may have underestimated you. You're quite an athlete. Some nice moves out there. Thank you. 
A lot of people think because I'm so thin that I can't move, but just watch. Congratulations, Cinda. Cinda and Sam, nice job. Nice battle in Powerball, 3-3 tie. So the women finish their first event in a 3-3 deadlock, and after one event in the men's preliminary, Wesley leads Scott 3-1, as we now move on to the joust. And here, the contenders have 30 seconds to knock a gladiator off his platform in an attempt to earn 10 points. Up first, it's Wesley and Nitro. And should a contender go the entire 30 oh seconds, he would win five points for a draw. And Wes with the initial strike. Here's that Nitro has his hands full here, and Wes isn't backing up. Nitro's landed a nice right cross and got Wesley off balance. But Wes maintains, now he's got Nitro off. Nitro oh, trying to hang on, and Wes crossed over to Nitro's pedestal, but it looks like Nitro went off first, though. Wesley not backing up the aggressor, as you see him here. He goes across to the head, sends Nitro backing off balance a little bit. Then a smart move by Wesley. He pursues it, pursues Nitro, but starts to lose his balance with a long reach. Nitro coming around with a roundhouse, but Wesley persisting. Right here, it's very close. Wesley declared the winner. Mike? Wesley Keck, you had some kick in that pugil stick. All right. Yeah, he hit me, hit me with a couple of pretty good shots. Uh, saw two of them there once, but... Pretty uh, good shots. How about some great shots? Definitely. Uh, I, I kind of thought it was a draw. I wasn't sure, but... Uh, he said he went off first, so uh, I'll take it. You'll take it any way you can it. get it. Nicely done. Wes Keck. As we see Scott Wright getting ready to take Nitro on in the pugil stick, we'll see what Scott's learned. Scott appearing here on American Gladiators after the DJs at KLOS, where he works in Los Angeles, dared him to be on the show. He's daring to give Nitro all he wants, but Nitro is able to knock Scott off balance, get him over to his pedestal and knock him off. Scott being a very, very aggressive personality, he's lunging across, he's going after Nitro, he's not taking any guff from him, but he throws himself off balance and steps on the pedestal. And Nitro, being a nice, accommodating host, throws him off. <laughs> so Wesley Keck wins the joust 10-0, and after two events in our men's preliminary round, he leads Scott 13-1. Now the women are tied after one event in their competition as they prepare to do battle in the joust. And up first, it'll be Samantha Bryant, and she'll have to duel Diamond. And in this case, Sam is giving away quite a bit in size, height, and body weight. On guard! Cunning and Guile may be the name of the game here for Samantha Bryant. Diamond probing with that pugil stick has Samantha going, and quickly, that's it, it's all over. Samantha Bryant down for the count. Well, now Cinda Menser will try her hand at Diamond. Cinda having a golden opportunity here to break the women's deadlock. Comes out kind of slow, being a little coy, and draws Diamond across. Cinda winning by default. Mike? Cinda, now tell us the truth. Are you surprised you're still standing there? <laughs> a little. Yeah, you, you had that look on your face. <laughs> her first hit was pretty hard, and uh, I don't know, I guess she just got off balance or something, but I'll take it. You know, you told us earlier that one of the reasons why you're here on American Gladiators is because your brothers used to push you around a little bit in, in events sort of like this. Anything like the uh, the joust? Uh, no, nothing like the joust. Well, you did well up there, and you won this particular match because, Diamond, you forgot. You're not supposed to step over to the other opponent's pedestal. Uh, yeah, I didn't forget, but I just, it was an instinct. She was going towards my head, and I was just charging. I get over anxious sometimes. We'll forgive you this time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Send a nice job. <laughs> Oh, Cinda benefits from Diamond's mistake and takes away 10 points from the Joust. So now after two events, Cinda now leads Samantha by a count of 13 to 3. Still to come on American Gladiators is the contender's opportunity to scale the wall. But up next is our game of hit or be hit. We call it Assault. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the men are set to go in Assault. And after two events, Wesley Keck with a 12-point lead over Scott Reif. And now we're looking at the assault course from the contender's point of view. Each man has 60 seconds to hit a target placed above the gladiator using one of several weapons. 
A contender starts here with a crossbow. If he misses there, he may continue on and take a chance with a rocket launcher. Missing there, he moves across the arena floor to find a cannon. And if he misses there, he then moves on to a handgun. And a dash to the final safe zone will offer three softballs. If a contender is out of ammo, but not out of time at this point, he may continue to cross the finish line without getting hit for four points. And doing the shooting honors this time around for the Gladiators is Turbo, and first up for the contenders is Scott Wright. Well, Scott, a former football player in high school, told us why American Gladiators appeal to him now. It's always nice once you're out of sports uh, to go out there and compare yourself to other people and just uh, have a good time with it, see where you stand. Ready! Well, Scott's gonna see where he stands here against Turbo. Crossbow. Let's see how he does with a rocket launcher. He doesn't, he doesn't have a rocket launcher on his helicopter, does he, Mike? Let's hope not in oh. Los Angeles. That shot almost hit the target, though. Very close. <laughs> He's going to take out Turbo. I'll tell you what, nobody has come closer than Scott Reif, and apparently, according to referee Larry Thompson, who blew his whistle, Scott was hit by Turbo. One shot. Using that rolling technique, Scott left his foot exposed and Turbo nailed it. Scott, man in the sky, I knew you were a helicopter pilot. I didn't realize you were a combat pilot. Yeah, well, it didn't do me much good down here on the ground. I'll tell you what, I've watched some of this competition. You were the closest with a crossbow and some of the, and the bazooka. You came very close to hitting the bullseye, just a little off. Yeah, I could have used a hand grenade, something that counts when you're close. But uh... <laughs> A few more seconds might have made the difference. Good luck the rest of the day, Scotty. Anyway, right. Appreciate it. So no points for Scott Reif, and now Wesley Keck will try his hand at Turbo. Again, each contender has 60 seconds to try to hit that target. You see located above the Gladiator. Seven points for hitting the red area of the target, 10 points for the bullseye, which is the white area of the target. Turbo has a certain pace that he fires those balls or tempos. He just puts one about every two seconds in there, just when the contender goes to lean out the fire. Wes setting himself. I think that shot went off uh, before Wesley had it intended it to. And he just didn't move quick enough because Turbo oh. is now two for two. Wes very calm and collected during the competition. Moving very well for a big man, and right here you'll see him not quite quick enough with that left foot. Turbo, you're getting mighty cocky up here. You got the feel and you got the touch. Well, it's all about hunting. We're either head hunting or we're body hunting. We're hunting them up the wall, and out here, just hunting them with these things. It's all the same thing. We just keep getting our job done. And I guess it's, uh, it's appropriate with a name like Turbo that you're shooting a uh, high-powered weapon here. <laughs> Everything's high-powered. My guns are always high-powered. Well, you got that right. Hey, stay away from them puppies. Turbo holds the men scoreless in assault. So after three events now, there's no change in the men's score. The women are up now, where Cinda leads Samantha by 10 points. And Cinda Menser is up first, but with Lace manning the gun, it'll take a great deal of concentration for her to score here. But earlier, Cinda told us that concentration wasn't really a problem for her. I think that mentally, I can hang tough for a long period of time. I don't lose that edge. I used to be a heptathlete. We had to do seven events in two days. And you had to keep your concentration throughout every single event. And I think that'll be a real plus for me in this. Ready? Well, the bad news for Cinda is that the assault was not one of the seven events in the heptathlon. She'll have to rely basically on instinct here. That shot is low. And I think Lace just picked her off, Cinda very quick to that next safe zone. And that's exactly what referee Larry Thompson ruled, that Cinda was hit. Fair that the ball struck her on the heel, Mike. Lace picking up where she left off. She is one of the uh, truest of shots among the gladiators. And now it's Samantha Bryan's turn to see what she can do with Lace. Samantha likes Cinda very quick. A woman who last year ran at 11.700 meters. Unfortunately, Mike, this isn't all just straight out speed. Our contenders have to be able to stop, dodge, 
and aim. And unfortunately, Sam's aim is way off on that one. <laughs> That's not a good idea, Samantha. Don't turn your back. Whatever you do, don't turn your back on the gladiator. <laughs> she's lucky there. That's the first time I've seen the karaoke on the uh, salt field. And she's way right with a rocket. Well, she's got the clicks to get away with it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, her aim's getting a little better anyway, Mike. I, I'm really surprised because Lace usually picks off contenders who run like that. Seven seconds to go now. Sam's not going to get this shot off in time. That goes awry. And that is it. Samantha Bryant didn't get hit. She just ran out of time. And Lace, as she is wont to do in this event, has once again, shut out our contenders. And Cinda, after three events, still holds a 10-point lead. Now, in the men's competition, Wesley leads Scott by 12 points. As they get ready for our next event, it's the wall. Here's Larry Zonka with an explanation. The wall is an event where our two contenders compete simultaneously, each trying to arrive first at the top of the 32-foot summit. But it's not a free climb, because 10 seconds after they begin, the gladiators start up after them to pull them off. Mike Adamley's up at the top of the wall. Mike, how's the view? Zonk, not bad. This is about as high as you can go here in stage 27 without actually getting on top of the roof. Now, the wall is a difficult event, but not a dangerous one. You can see that our gladiators and contenders have safety harnesses on to prevent them from falling, falling to the ground, that is. But the wall will demand a tremendous price from the contender who reaches the top first. His fingers will ache and his arms will be very sore. The man who makes it to the top first and earns 10 points will have clearly earned them. Let's go down to the base of this ascent and this summit where Wesley Keck and Scott Reif are getting set to go. And in this wall event, Wesley will be chased by Thunder, while Scott will be trailed by Nitro. Ready! And each contender given a 10-second head start. Wes in the red, Scott in the blue. Scott with a slight lead here early on. As our gladiators hit the wall, you can see Scott opening that lead a little bit as Nitro falls loose, comes off the wall. Scott maintaining his concentration. Wes concentrating for all he's worth as well. Scott could make it up there first. Oh, he loses his grip, and that's it. Wes continuing. All he has to do is make the top. Thunder's up. Up the wall behind him, but not close enough to be a factor. As West scales the wall. Wesley, big men like you aren't supposed to make it up mountains like this, walls like this. Yeah, that's the first time I made it. I didn't make it in practice. I looked over and he was ahead of me, and uh, I just kept humping and pumping, and uh, next thing you know, I was there at the top. Well, you finally made it, and you did so in a great time. Congratulations. Wesley Keck, way to go, babe. Tough, tough situation. Did, did you realize that Nitro had fallen off? Your gladiator behind you had fallen off the wall? No, I had no clue. I was just trying to get up there as fast as I could. Yeah, that is the wall from hell, I tell you. I didn't make it in <laughs> practice, and I didn't make it here today either, so it's a tough Star one for me. Lord. Well, temporary setback. Good luck in the future, though. Thank Scott. you. So Scott Reif loses his grip on the wall as well as a chance to earn some points. As a result, he also loses more ground on Wesley Keck, who now leads this competition 23 to 1. Now still to come on the American Gladiators, a lot more action, including the high impact of human cannonball. Also our version of Demolition Derby. We call it atmosphere. But up next, the women will scale the wall. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where another enthusiastic crowd is on hand to watch our women tackle the 32-foot wall. Now, coming into this event, Cinda Menser holds a 10-point lead over Samantha Bryant, and Samantha has been held scoreless in the last two events, so this one is very, very important, Larry. And earlier, Mike, Samantha told us why she might approach this wall event with a little more caution than most. I used to do a lot of hiking, and one day we were just hiking, and my rope broke. So I fell like two stories and broke my arm and my hip bone. Mentally, it's like, 
Every time I get up there, I can go like three steps and it's like, you fail, you fail, you fail, you fail, you fail. But you never know. Having a gladiator come after me, maybe I'll just get up that wall. And in this case, we'll have to see if Lace will be a source of intimidation or inspiration for Samantha. On the other side, Cinda Menser will have gold chasing after her. And to refresh your memory, our contenders have a 10 second head start before the gladiators can begin their ascent. And each contender has 60 seconds to make it to the top. Cinda working very quickly. Samantha a little slower, a little steadier. And we'll see how the gladiator fares with that behind her. Obviously not taking very long to pull Samantha off the wall. I think Samantha was more intimidated by the wall than the gladiator. And an extra caution she took obviously allowed Lace to catch up. Cinda eating up the large chunks of wall real estate with those long arms and long legs as she makes the final reach for the top of the wall, pulling herself up and earning the 10 points. Again, we look at the replay with Samantha. As we see Samantha a little stalled on the wall and being pulled off. Nothing to it but to do it, and you did so in 38 seconds. Not bad, Cindy. Thanks. That wall's pretty tough, and I just tried to keep my concentration on my grips. Felt a little bit shaky, like I might slip a little bit. You know, those grips are placed strategically along the wall. Uh, did, were you able to find the correct line of ascent? Yes, I looked at it before I started and um, just tried to find a path that I'd take. Like the microbiology major that you are, you think everything out before you go at it, right? Right. <laughs> Congratulations. And a good climb in the women's wall gets Cinda 10 more points. And now after four events, she now leads Samantha by a commanding 23 to three margin. Over in the men's event, Wesley holds a 23-1 lead over Scott as we now begin human cannonball. And Larry, once again, each contender has two swings at two different gladiators, each successful swing worth five points. And speaking of a man who needs some points, well, here's Larry right now with Scott Wright. Scott, you're a little short on points. Are you going to apply any of your aerobatic techniques in this cannonball event? Well, I don't know that I have any aerobatic techniques that will actually help me out at, at all. That's an awful big target there, so I'm just going to grab that rope, swing down, and uh, give him my best shot. Yeah, I wouldn't do any whirly bird. I'd just stick with cannonball. Yeah, just straight ahead and give him a hit and hope for the best. Good luck, Scott. Thanks. And as a helicopter pilot and reporter for a local radio station, Scott, known as the Sky Lord out here in Southern California, he's going against Gemini. And Gemini goes, but Thunder doesn't budge for Wesley Keck. Scott's got a lot of weight behind him. He makes the contact here. Gemini slides back, loses it, can't maintain his balance, and comes off. Second swing coming up, and the Sky Lord has a chance to earn another five points. This time he goes against Thunder. Scott unsuccessful against Thunder, but Wesley does a great job of knocking Gemini off the pedestal. Mike? Both our contenders, Wes and Scott, went one for two, and that's worth five points for each of them. A little tougher than you thought, Wesley? Yeah, especially the first time. Uh, Thunder's a big man. He was really tough to get off there, and I don't think I even moved him an inch. Scott, what about you? What about your effort? I uh, just didn't get a good swing on the second on the second try. I missed him a little bit, a little bit off to the side, so I didn't get a good shot on him. Bottom line, it's got to be a lot of fun. I mean, there's, a, there's not a single person in the audience that wouldn't want to try that. That's right. You'd like to try it. It is a lot of fun. It's a neat swing. Okay, well, you're both one for two, and that's good for five points for each of you. Way to go. That's it, five points apiece for our contenders. So now, after five events, Wesley leads Scott 28 to six. Over on the women's scoreboard, Cinda leads Samantha 23 to three. And now it's their turn for Human Cannonball. And Cinda draws Diamond for her first swing. Meanwhile, Samantha Bryant, she'll have to take the measure of ice. Both ice and Diamond very formidable on that pedestal. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Diamond is on uh, Loco Street after that shot. Meanwhile, Ice was rock solid. Cinda, affectionately known as a toothpick, doubling up into a tight ball, delivering quite an impact to Diamond and blowing her into the nickel seats. But the nice thing about human cannonball is our contenders get a second chance. Samantha this time will swing against Diamond. Cinda draws Ice this time around. Ready? Swing number two, here they come. Oh, Ice goes flying that time, surprisingly, and our Lady Die stays up. 
Diamond with some great balance there, Larry. Surprisingly, Skinner delivers the blow and knocks Ice off as we look at Samantha's helmet cam as she swings down into Diamond. Diamond down low, withstanding the impact, takes the shot. You can see her hair fly away from the impact and does a little toe walk on the edge. Well, I didn't think it was possible, but a contender finally broke the ice. Yes, they did. They broke the ice this time. That was the only time. You know, this thing is hard to stay up on here, but it's, you know, I'm the new gladiator, and all these, all of my teammates have been great. They've taught me how to stay up here most of the time. <laughs> well, every once in a while, you know, you get the bear most of the time. Sometimes the bear gets you. That's true. Sometimes they do break the ice. Well, all's fair on love and the American gladiators. Another perfect score for our heptathlete, Cinda Mincer. Five points at the expense of ice. So now, after five events, Cinda has increased her lead over Samantha by a score of 33 to 3. Still to come on the American Gladiators is our eliminator. But up next, it's Atmosphere. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where after five events in this men's preliminary round, Wes Keck leads Scott Wright by 22 points as we get ready for Atlasphere. In this event, a contender tries to score by ruling his or her ball onto the four scoring pods worth a point. At the same time, two gladiators try to defend these pods by knocking the contenders out using spears of their own. And believe me, folks, it is much more difficult than it looks. You have to keep your legs constantly pumping. Now, Scott Reif, our helicopter pilot, no stranger to working in close quarters. He's 28 years old from Chatsworth, California, and he's having the time of his life on American Gladiators. And earlier, he told us who had the biggest impact on his athletic life. The person that had the biggest influence on me would be my father. And um, he was great in as much as he always just said, you can do anything that you put your mind to. And uh, you can make it happen. And if you just give it 100%, uh, you know, never be ashamed of that. Just do your best. Now the question, Larry, can he make it happen here? Well, I got to believe that these atmospheres are a good deal different than that helicopter he's used to. Field of play is set, and the men are off. Gemini surprisingly having trouble getting his atmosphere out of that scoring pod. Wes Keck looks like he's been inside that thing all his life. That was a piece of cake for him. Well, up here the gladiator got a little mixed up and let Wes run free while they doubled up on Scott. That may be the case, Larry, but Wes, with all that power he has in his lower body, is really able to move that atmosphere with the greatest of ease. He scores again. Scott not really having that much difficulty getting his atmosphere going. He just has a problem trying to get it to settle, although their laser knocks him out. West with another free run and another goal. Gemini blocking him on this score. But he makes the move on the rollback, gets it into the pod. That's called persistence. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's what Wesley Keck did. And he also won this atmosphere match for Zip. And neither Gemini or Laser could stop him. Mike? Wes, congratulations. I don't think we've had a contender yet score as many times as you did, four to be exact. This is a little like being an astronaut locked in a space capsule here. Yeah, it is. Uh, I got lucky at first. Jim and I seem to get hung up over there, so they gave me a, a quick advantage. Just for the audience and the fans, how wild is it inside of this thing? Oh, this is great. This is uh, probably the, the most fun you'll have at, uh, during the competition. Congratulations, Wes. And that gives a 4-0 victory for Wesley over Scott in Atmosphere. And now, after six events, Wesley leads 32 to 6. In our women's preliminary, Cinda has 33 points to Samantha's three. And Larry, because they are lightweight, so to speak, at least compared to the men contenders, Cinda and Samantha are really going to have their work cut out for them against Blaze and Diamond in this case because that lack of body weight, that lack of raw power really works at your disadvantage in this event. Larry Thompson blows the whistle, and Cinda in the blue atmosphere gets it moving really quickly. So does Samantha. Now can they get it to stop inside that scoring pod? That's the question. 
it comes back to what you mentioned before, Mike, the ability to get that weight reversed and settle as we watch Cinder making a score. And now Samantha grabs a point right here. But now they are dead stuck, Larry. They can't get out of there. <laughs> well, when I talk about them getting stopped, now they can't seem to get started once they're in the pods. Diamond doing a pretty good job of defending against uh, Cinder there. Meanwhile, Samantha <laughs> is still stuck. You're going to have to send the water wagon out for Samantha and get her, get her recuperated. We need a couple of forklifts out here. Bulldozers. Cinder almost pulling a score, but Diamond knocking her out of the pod. In the meantime, Samantha wears herself out in the scoring pod. You and Samantha suffered a common problem, and I think it was lack of body weight. It is tough to get these things going. Definitely. I was jumping on the side of the wall, and I couldn't get it out of the pot. I got stuck. What was the hardest part of this for you? Trying to get away from Diamond. She's a good defender. Would you like to try this again? Sure. Congratulations. Well, Cinda and Samantha each manage a point in our women's atmosphere. So heading into our final event, Cinda leads 34 to 4. Who'll advance to the quarterfinal round? We'll find out next on The Eliminator. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where our contenders are standing by for our final event, The Eliminator. Mike, both contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belts to reach the top. Once there, each contender must cross a 30-foot span using a specially designed handbike. Then across a balance beam where instead of medicine balls, gladiators now throw weighted blocking pads at the contenders. And now, Zonk, the fun really begins. The contenders have to scramble up a 20-foot cargo net and then a wild ride down a zip line that takes the contender over the entire length of the arena floor. From there, it's down a final straightaway where the contender has to negotiate a set of hurdles. And then they have to make an important choice. Behind three of those doors are American gladiators all bent on stopping the contenders from crossing that finish line. Heading into the eliminator, Cinda leads Samantha by 30 points. So that means that Samantha will have to beat Cinda by 15 seconds in order to advance. It's a tall order, but it can be done. Samantha in the red, Cinda in the blue, and up the ramp they go. Or do they? <laughs> Samantha having some problems early on, but she scrambles back up to her feet and to the top of the platform. Cinda with the big lead. Samantha running into problems with a hand bike. Cinda way out in front, and so is that shot by Lace there with the blocking bag. Cinda doing a great job of keeping her balance. It looked like she was going to fall off the beam there before the bag even came by. Meanwhile, back at the... Uh, and bike Samantha, she has finally made it. Now across the platform she goes, not giving up one bit. Hello, bag. <laughs> Mike, I think that's the worst thing to do right there is to stop and try to take the shot from the bag because you'll start to lose your balance on that beam. Well, in the past we have seen many contenders doing just that and losing their balance. Cinda almost a free run towards the finish line here. She goes down the zip line. Now over the hurdles, great athletic ability being displayed by Cinda Menser. As we see Cinda cross the finish line, Sam, on the other hand, has run out of time. But her problems didn't start there. They started way back at the beginning on the treadmill. It's all over, at least this preliminary round, and a job well done. You are proof positive that brains and brawn do mix. I was just glad to get through that last event. I was real nervous, but I just tried to keep my head on. Congratulations. You go on to the quarterfinals. Congratulations to Cinda Mincer, who advances with a 90 to 4 win over Samantha Bryan. After six events, Wes leads Scott by 26 points, which translates into a 13 second cushion for Wesley. And there's Wes's wife, Michael, who is expecting a child in the not too distant future, a little contender, as her shirt says. Wesley in the red, Scott in the blue. The Sky Lord has had some tough times today, but he hasn't given up. We don't think he will here either. Moving very well on a hand bike. Scott Reif has the lead here. Wesley having a little trouble getting his hand bike to work. Thunder hit. I tell you what, Thunder really threw that bag at Scotty. Scotty able to maintain his balance and hang on. 
but it did allow West to get back in the hunt here in the race. Up the cargo net they go. This is a very arm tiring event right here, getting up this cargo net. Both men suffering from a little fatigue in the upper body at this point. And Larry, believe me, both men will appreciate this ride coming up on the zip line. Bad time to have upper body fatigue, isn't it? It is a chance to get a breather. Wes Keck, the first man down. Here comes Scotty. And remember, both contenders are working against the clock. They have 60 seconds to finish the course. Wesley scrambles over the finish line in 56 seconds. And Scott unable to make it in the minute time limit. That means he'll get zero points in the eliminator. This might have been his undoing after he took that shot from Thunder. Now, the first contender to the zip line earns the right away, and Wesley just edges out Scott for that lead. Scott, we alluded to it a little earlier. You're kind of here on a bet. Uh, let me ask you something. Did you win the bet? Well, I think I won the bet just by showing up. But uh, Wes was tough. I think you accumulated a lot more points than I did. But I had a good time. That's the important thing. You did have a good time. Well, we won't know about the quarterly finals until we get all the points in, but uh, thanks for competing here with us today. Thank you, we Larry. enjoyed it. Pleasure. Good enough. Thanks. Leslie, looks like, congratulations. You're in the uh, quarterly finals. Right, I appreciate Blew it. Blew right through it. Let me tell you something. I, after watching you and knowing your background in semi-pro sports, uh, do you feel like you've been through a football game? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's a tough competition. Scott did a great job, and I was just happy to be here. Let me ask you something. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I enjoyed it. I'm going to be sore. Uh, I may not be saying that after uh, the next round, but so far I'm enjoying it. Great time. Thank you. West's wife, Michael, enjoyed it in the Eliminator. A contender gets two points for every second he finishes under 60 seconds. West's time, 56 seconds, eight points for the total victory of 40 to six over Scott Wright. So congratulations to our 16 men and women who have advanced into next week's quarterfinal round. Here's a preview. Next week, the quarterfinal round begins as four contenders move one more step toward becoming American Gladiators champion. Sheila Barser, Nate Foster, Trace Tillotson, Rico Costantino. Watch as they challenge Nitro, Ice, Thunder, Blade, and the rest of the American Gladiators. That's it for this edition of the American Gladiators. For Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Annelies saying so long from Universal Studios Hollywood.